Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a side view mirror for a car here and white plastic outer cover. And there's a bunch of that out. Come cap and then there. Oh, it's a white Chevy. What's the registration say? 19 is when it expired. Oh, we got a Chevy. There's a, uh, there's a Chevy grill. We want to welcome you back to day three as we are looking for Duke Herringer out of Clarksburg, California. Now Duke was 63 years old when he went missing in 2018. The family believes that, you know, with his excessive uh, drinking and substance abuse, we are either looking at an accident or we could be looking at a potential self-harm on this one. The first two days searching in the area, we have one main body of water that's been our big focus because we have a cell phone ping over at the Steamboat Slough Bridge just to the west of where we're at this morning. Now with that location, we were able to identify that there is a vehicle in the center of the canal there, or in the center of the slough, and it is currently upside down. Now normally, when we come into this, into a rural community where there's only a couple hundred people, we're only going to locate one, maybe two vehicles. However, on our first day of searching, I'm gonna throw up the uh, map right here for you right now. Our first day of searching, as we come from the, from the uh, Steamboat Slough Bridge down river, we actually ended up finding 10 vehicles on the north side off of Sutton Road. Now on the third day one, we ended up diving on two of those vehicles that were very potential high probability targets. The first one ended up being a Nissan and not a Chevy Cruze like we're looking for. And the second one, really we thought at the very end of the day on day one, we thought for sure we had found Duke. The way that this vehicle was upside down, being able to identify that it had five spoke wheels in the same fashion that Duke's car did. Being that the rear wheel had the same distance on sonar anyway, from what we could see topside, from the rear of the wheel to the rear of the car, it appeared to be Chevy Cruze in size and shape. However, once we ended up diving on it, it was an Audi, blue in color, and not the white Chevy that we were looking for. So we stepped back into it on day two, where it was a little bit more windy. We ran the slough about six miles in length, and we ended up finding, on the south side over here, we ended up finding another nine vehicles. One was an SUV, we found a pickup truck, we found a potential Jeep, maybe a boat, as well as some other vehicles and some memorial markers where it looks like a, you know, a family and individual had gone in. The vehicle's still in there, but they were able to recover the uh, individual from that one. So that brings us into yesterday, at the end of yesterday, I did everything I could to get down on that car at the very center of the slough up by the steamboat uh, slough bridge. But the buoy that we thought was attached to an anchor that was attached to the car that was already there, ended up being attached to some logs and was not attached to the actual target in the car that I was after. So after doing some free diving, trying to identify if I could find it just on free diving, uh, it was the end of the day, I was just beat. And so we ended up staying in the area one more day because as we were on the river, on the slough yesterday, I have a red rope right here in the water. I have a high probability with this vehicle that is upside down, this could be Duke. I also have on the south side of the slough over here, we were talking to a local farmer by the name of Tim, who also uh, assist with dredging this river, that their big dredging machine picked up a car of some sort, they put it on the bank. We don't know if this is the same car in question, but it could be. So this second target in question, it's of interest to me, but also meeting Tim at the very end of the day, it's a little less interest to me because it sounds like that might have been the same car because of how close it is to shore that's buried in silt, sand, and sediment. It is on its wheels. We can only see a little bit top of the car. Is it the size and shape of a Chevy Cruze? We don't know. But in the event that these first two locations, these first two targets are not what we're looking for, we are then going to put the boat back in the water today, run some sonar, and get a good lock over the top of that car that's upside down in the very center of the slough near where Duke's cell phone last pinged. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult because we also have to time it with the tide schedule. 
we are just down south of Sacramento. You look at it, we have one Sacramento River channel that comes off to the east, and then you have the deep channel of the Sacramento that comes off to the west. And in between the two rivers, you have all these little sloughs that are running from east to west and all over the place. So you have hundreds of miles of river and sloughs and for the family, we just want to make sure that with 100% confidence, we do what we can for them while we're in the area to clear Steamboat Slough for them today. So we appreciate you being here with us. We're going to go get suited up right now and fingers crossed, today's going to be the day that we bring Duke Herringer home to his family. families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. are on I do have a couple things I double check that their air is going into my dry suit I double check that I have air to go into my VC I double check that I have air to breathe in an emergency I double check that I can release the air and then I also double check that I have air for my face mask regulator and then I also make sure that I have air in my tanks This pond's been down here for 10 to 15 years. You can tell the way that it's left well, probably 25 to 30 years. Just falls apart. And see if we can identify what kind of car it is. We know it's a bus out. Hubcap. It is a... A Chrysler product, or a Chrysler with some sort. Alright, that one is clear. Not what we're looking for.
not what we're looking for. It's an old Chrysler. Been down here for, I would say, 20 to 25 years. No plate, it's, it's old and rusted. That part's already fallen off. No, I could only make in the hubcaps for wheels. I could only make out the uh, hubcaps themselves. Nothing else on the car was identifiable. Yeah, we'll make our way to the other side of the slough. We'll drive around to it and go check that other one that's buried in the uh, sand. And then if that's not it, then we'll get the boat out and go see what we can find in the middle of the channel. We won't be able to dive on that one until about one o'clock today with the tide change. It'll be too strong prior to then. But we can at least work on getting it marked. There's my rope right there. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and like I said, it's only like 10 feet, 10, 15 feet offshore right there. And we have a path right here, so I'll just go ahead and suit up now and then we'll go down and knock this one out and see what it is. Not the one we're looking for. 
we'll double check, but I think we're looking for a 7DQS691. That's an old plate. What kind of a Chevy was it? Couldn't tell, it's really buried. I couldn't tell, all I could tell is it was a Chevy. From performancechevy.com with the dealership. When, when, what's the, what's the registration say? Registration is from 19 is when it expired. Oh. He went missing 2018. Wow. So this has been expired a while. Just do a, a Google search to see if the plate is coming up as somebody that's missing. All right. So that's what we'll do next. This is the first car on this slew I've been able to identify any plate number. Coming back to a 2012 Chevrolet Malibu. Huh. And let's see, theft records. We have a date reported of theft of 1-2 of 2020. I was hopeful you just had the plate wrong. I was hoping too, but yeah, Malibu is not a cruise. Very similar <clears throat> in size and shape. But yeah, unfortunately not what we're looking for. And it's stolen. Yeah. Our next plan is we now need to head back across the Steamboat Slough Bridge. We're gonna park where we took the boat out last night and we are going to put the boat back in on the riverbank right there. We're then going to mark that vehicle in the center with my marker rather than what we were doing yesterday, hoping that that other buoy in the river already was attached to it. Once we attach to it, we're gonna wait for the one o'clock hour or so and that's when the tide is changing, coming back in with the river and that'll give me a better chance to be down in that current without it being with that with it being a better safety a margin of safety for us so that's the plan right now yeah so this is the the back of his car it has a little lip here but the car that i was just down on it had like a little lip that kind of stuck up a little bit more and it wasn't very big it was only about that wide and it just went bloop at the very end of it Hello, Jared. Hello, sir. Giving you a uh, mid-morning uh, update for you. All right. So we've been on uh, two vehicles so far. The first one was a uh, older Chrysler that's been down there for 20 to 25 years. Oh, my. And, okay. the, and that was the one on the north side of the slough. And uh -huh. then we came over to the one on the south side of the slough that's buried in all the mud and silt. Dropped in on it. It was a white car. Um, identified it as a Chevy. Got my hopes up got to the license plate and it was not the right plate oh, and we yes. identified it as a Chevy Malibu oh my gosh but you so know close. yeah so close yes right colors right shape and uh, yeah unfortunately not so now we're uh, gonna head back up put the boat in there at Steamboat uh, Bridge and then we're gonna go mark the one in the middle and see what we can do to identify that one today okay so anyway right. that's the update so far Great. Hey, uh, now we're planning on you guys for dinner tonight, so uh, whatever time you're available. I we'll I, I heard the menu. I appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Chat soon. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, bye. Yesterday, I was thinking that this, because of this fence being knocked down, there's something going on. Got a side view mirror for a car here and white plastic outer cover. Schaffenacker, right hand RH. So we got a part number and RH here. We'll look that up here in a minute. And uh, then uh, we'll see on this mirror plate here, see there's some more broken glass here
Honda. Okay. Dang, not a Chevy. I have uh, eBay listings of a right hand side mirror, but uh, it's not the part number matching up. Alrighty, we are warmed up and ready to go. Let's go see if we can find this car. And with uh, lower water levels also, even though it's only down one foot, that actually also means that there's less of a current in here. The more water, the higher it is, the more water that's flowing through here. And so less water, less current, safer and easier diving for us. All right, right there. All right, just back up a little bit. I was so close to it too, look at it. On sonar here. Line, though I mean that line goes right to it I don't want to believe that it's nothing more than a pile of logs but look that line goes right to it right there right there there's the line and I was all over that pile yesterday this might be a pile of logs which is what I was on yesterday. I'm gonna hit some different angles. Because there is nothing else out here. We're right over the top of it there. So that's right in line with that tree. And it's right in line with that black bag. All right, I'm just, just gonna spin a little bit and get some different readings on it. See right there, gives me a height. up a little bit here yeah I don't have a car at all in this direction just those logs that I was actually down and on yesterday all right go ahead and let go of that I know right where it's at now in line with that tree so let me go across it some other directions and although that looks like a wheel there it wasn't a wheel when I was down on it yesterday it was some um, uh, branches that were sticking up and it's only at that one angle that it looks like a wheel. And it's a lot easier to read today too, because we're only at 14 feet now versus a little bit deeper, but we also don't have all the waves going. So a much cleaner image today on it. So what I'm trying to do right now is just get some good solid cross readings on side and down because if it's a car, I'm going to have a definitive car at just the right angle. I'm just trying to find what that right angle is to tell me 100% certainty if it's that pile of logs I was on or if we do have a car. And right now it's just looking like a pile of logs. All right, based upon the length, it is not a car. And what I'm looking at and able to decipher on this one is I'll show you on the camera. I ended up getting the perfect angle that I needed 
to convince myself one way or the other. So based upon the speed I was going, and you have the ridge line of a shadow here, and with the ridge line of the shadow, see how the length of this, we're, we're looking for an object that is roughly 18 to 36, 18, less than 18 feet in length. And if you take this and you turn it, we're looking at roughly 25 feet in length, which is about how long the log was that I was down there on it yesterday. And so you have one log on the left, and then you have another log about the same length, about 25, 30 feet on the right hand side of that as well. So that confirms what I saw visually as well while I was down there with the ropes and all the different logs that were down there as I was diving on it last night. So I think that what we need to do then at this point is right now it's still early on in the day. I wanna do one more thing just to, for my own consciousness, even though we've cleared this slough, the painter, the Paintersville Bridge is just up the road about a mile, mile and a half from here, which is the bridge that he would always cross over as well. We have a lot of opportunity for him to go off the side of the road up here. Some parts of it has a guardrail, other parts of it do not. And so I want to take the next hour or two and I think that we should just go ahead and run it, Cade, and let's go make sure we finish clearing parts of the Sacramento River as well and just do everything we can on this case while we're in the area, fingers crossed, we can still find Duke today. Nice and clean. This is even cleaner than the uh, slough that was over there. And what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about nice and clean, and if you've not been with us for a sonar reading before, let me bring you into the world of sonar and everything that I'm looking at. The first thing I'm looking at, when I say it's a clean bottom, I don't have any big rocks or anything like or big outcroppings or anything. It's nice and clean and smooth. Uh, that's not smooth, but that's where the pipe was at right there. So when I see something like that pop up, I'm able to be like, all right, that's piping. So when I'm talking about smooth, nice and clean, real easy reading. And this one here is down imaging. So you go from zero, so this is my grid line, and this is automatically adjust. So from zero to 22 feet matches your depth over here. I normally run about 36 to 40 feet out from shore. For, and the way that I look and engage that is on my side imaging. I usually cast 75 feet to the left and 75 feet to the right. Again, anything that is black is water column and I'm looking for anomalies like this now that's a little bit smaller uh, not quite the size of a, a car but we can flash back to what cars look like from previous days and hopefully today we'll be able to find you another car over here so this is a picture in time so if I need to scroll back and I need to zoom in on something I can do so and I can just be like all right that's not a car or it is a car and then that usually says all right I need to move over 35 feet and then really pinpoint it with my live scope. Now my live scope over here is whatever is happening in real time. So if a fish swims by like this fish that's swimming, I can see a little fish swimming by. So when we do get over a vehicle, we'll give you an example right here, you can actually see what a vehicle looks like in real time on sonar right here. And that is a quick down and dirty overview for you as to what we're looking at and some of the terminology that we use from live scope, down imaging, side imaging, picture in time, live. All right, so I'm happy with this. The main thing I wanna do is come down about a thousand yards from where the bridge was at to just double check this side, which this is the one of the channels for the Sacramento River. This is the Eastern one. And we are currently on the East side where River Road is at. And now we're gonna run this side all the way up to the Paintersville Bridge. Uh, from time to time, we may jump back to the other side if we happen to notice that there is no guardrail. And the main focus on this area is just because at the Steamboat Slough Bridge is where we had a last cell phone ping for Duke. Now Duke himself is the youngest of, so eight siblings and uh, one passed away when Duke was in his teens. And then uh, Duke is, yeah, has now passed away, or we're assuming he's passed away because we've not been able to find him and he's not made contact with family. So with that one, I believe that there's six siblings that are still alive from what I understand, Kate. Duke himself never had any children and his mother had passed away just a couple of uh, 
weeks or months before Duke went missing. So for a mother to not have to have that heartache and the wondering, you know, it was, I, I guess we, we can say that it was a blessing that his mother had passed away before Duke went missing. And maybe that was one of the reasons why maybe Duke, you know, chose substance abuse. And maybe it was either an accident or it was on purpose is what put Duke in that along with just being 63 years old and older Mel who, um, you know, had depression in his life and substance abuse. And you just never know what people are going through. And I guess, you know, that's a reminder that you know, if you could walk a mile in somebody else's shoes and never judge them, you know, they might be having a bad day. You run into somebody at the grocery store and they're just having the worst day. You don't know what happened earlier on their day or earlier in their life or the week or the month. And so, you know, I just want to say, you know, we need to all be considerate and passionate for everyone in life and try not to let somebody else's behavior trigger a response from us and just think, What's going on? We don't know. Everybody has something going on. I have stuff going on. You have stuff going on. Everybody in the entire world has feelings, hurts, depression, sadness, happiness. And we as humans, let's do everything we can to make it a little less burdensome on those individuals out there. And it's weird too, like over on this side, there's no guardrail, yet over on that side, they decide to have a guardrail. But then as soon as we pass the bridge, then there's no guardrail on this side, and they put a guardrail on this side. And I might have a vehicle right over here. Need to put eyes on it. All right, it's not north of this palm tree, or this tree right here. All right, here's the car over on the left. I don't think it's a car though. It seems too small the way that it's popping up on sonar here. Yeah, I think it's just a large rock. It's only giving me like a three by three reading. I wanna make sure that we double, double and triple check it. See how that bank drops off on live scope. It goes from pretty much six down to, we're we gonna head down to 25 almost immediately. 26, 27. And I'll show you on, on uh, side and down imaging. In fact, it's only really showing up on down imaging here, just right here. And it's not that big. It's only, oh, like I said, two to three feet in height two to three feet width and nothing on side imaging. So as a result, I'm gonna rule that one out that that is not a vehicle. Over here we have guardrails have now switched from the west side. They're now over here on the east side. So as a result, I'm gonna take a chance and a gamble and head over here to the road that heads up to the family farm. And it's gonna be about two miles up the road before he would have made a left to go to the family farm. So for a two mile stretch here, north of Painterville, Paintersville Bridge on the Sacramento River, heading towards Sacramento, north, we have no guardrail. And that's where we're gonna go clear right now. Greenbush. That green bush right there. I don't think it's a car. No, not a car. Just a pile. Oh, right there, I might actually have a vehicle this time. Let's see, I'll show you what it looks like on side and down. That triggers my wanting to go back. So this is a see it's kind of like a square object but at first glance on side scan it appears as though it's been down here for probably 15 years just the way it's caved in 
here it is on down imaging so now we're going to go put ourselves right over the top of it and identify it on live scope and see what we can come up with to see if it's a vehicle that's right side up upside down and so one of the first things we do is we identify based on the shoreline where from the shoreline it comes off and then we can really then see if we need to go left or right I don't know how far up we went the other thing too while you're out here on the rivers as you see things floating down we want to always make sure that we check them and make sure it's nothing that we need to be picking up and reporting all right right in line with that tree right there off to the right a little bit Right there on live. See that on live a little bit. I think it's a pickup truck. Yep, it's a pickup truck. Let's see if we can get a better reading on it. All right, right there on live. Single cab pickup truck. Let me get you a good shot of it here. There you go. All right, see it right there? Single cab pickup truck. And it's been down there for quite a while, too. You can see how the top of it's rusted out. The roof of it is missing. So I would say it's been down there for probably a good 20 to 25 years. All right, so we'll see if Matt can find somewhere to park. And we got Matt right here. You got the cones right here. You got the intersection coming up right here. And you can see the guardrail also laying on the side of the bank there. I'm expecting from what I've seen so far is that they have not been pulling cars out of the river here after they somebody goes in. So I'm expecting a car or two in here. And then we need to identify if it happens to be in the shape of a Chevy Cruze that we need to dive on it. Or who knows? I mean, maybe they did end up pulling the vehicle out. It's currently 29 feet right here. I uh, can't tell if that's a vehicle or not. We'll have to come back over the top of it. But this is the intersection where it just tees right there. And that guardrail has just been wiped out. They're getting ready to replace it. So yeah, let's scan that area good and see what we can find. I'm actually surprised. Let me show you on sonar here. I'm actually really surprised. We may not have a vehicle in here. And that's what it's looking like on live. But this is what it's looking like on side and down. And it's actually really, really clean in there. Like these are these are little rocks and stuff like that. But we have no vehicles sticking up. This is the sandy bottom out in the middle of the river. This is the bank on the right-hand side. And we will double check it down 100 yards or so. I'm just not seeing anything in the way of vehicles. Now this dark shadow on the left-hand side here is where the bank drops off even more from the levee. And so what we'll want to do when we come back over it is we'll move over further to the left to make sure that we scan it. We have kind of a shiny object there, but it's not big enough to be a car. And then these are trees in here. Yeah, it is clean. I'm actually really surprised. And based upon the flow of this river and that intersection, if a car was to come off in here, I would not expect it to be any further down than where we're actually at right now. So what I want to do is I just want to move over to the right a little bit more to get out of this shadow section. 
and it just drop us into that right at the bottom of the levee and the riverbed to give me a good solid rating since we scanned closer to shore already. Yeah, surprisingly no car in here, Kate. Okay? All right, well, let's keep running the river. All right, look at this. We have another pickup truck right there. Another farm truck. Old too in here. It's been in here for 10, 15, 15 to 20 years. So two pickup trucks so far along this route. Single cab. All right, let's keep going. What do we have? Let's go over to the right a little bit. And you know what? On down imaging, it almost looked like we had five spoke wheels on here. Too far to the left. We gotta go to the right a little bit. Okay, we are too far to the right. It's right about 50 feet from shore, so I gotta move over to the left a little bit. Okay, look at that right there. I think we have a five spoke wheel. One, two, three, four, five. I'll show you what I'm looking at right now. Right there. One, two, three, is that a five? I'm, I'm gonna get some different angles of it. But I need to get it on live, I need to get it on side better. I need to really be able to identify it. But we might have a target to dive on. It is on live, but barely, like I can barely pick it up right there. Upside down. Fourteen feet in length. Twelve to fourteen feet in length. Right there. Look at the look at the front wheel. So tough to say on this one, Cade. I feel like we have, we're gonna have to dive this one. We're gonna have to find a parking spot up there for him. We're gonna have to figure this out on how to get to it. There we go. Good, now we got a solid luck. What we may have to do is um, call Matt, have him drive and pick us up, then change, and then have him drop us off on the way back if there's no spot here. Yeah, there shouldn't be a car here at all. Yeah. Hey, so I have a car in a location Yeah. that is not in a location that would be a dump, in my opinion. Really weird spot. 
So come back down to road 143. I'll be here to guide you and direct you and we'll just pull you right into it. It's gonna be tight. And then uh, I'll shoot up there and then walk back across the road over here. Okay, well I see you uh, on the uh, highway? Yes, we are up on the highway. Okay, cool. So, on my way. All right, sounds good. There's a, uh, there's a, um, what can I call it? A grill. Right there, there's a Chevy grill. Come on. Alright, come on. This is the part. It is a RSX. Come on, what do we got here? This is the rear vent. I think it's white. Uh, I don't think this is it though. I don't know what it is. Is it white? No, it's not white. Yes, it's still there. Awesome. Alright, I mean this five star, one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so let's go find our line of our back. I think that's going to pick up the
grill, Matt. Yeah. Just not go with the vehicle that's down there. Okay. We need to identify if by chance that's a Chevy Cruze grill, but I think that's a, a pickup truck grill. Yep. So as a result, I don't think that we need to look upstream anymore tonight. But what I ended up finding was a Honda, an RSX edition. What kind of car is that, do you know? It's a SUV, like crossover, I think. So the, the vehicle was upside down. It did have five spoke wheels. So we did identify that on sonar, which is also for this for the Chevy Cruze that we're looking for, for Dukes, we're looking for five-star wheels. Um, it's the right size of car, but unfortunately, at the end of day three here, it is not Duke's car. We've not yet been able to identify and solve and bring Duke home for the Herringer family. We are going to wrap up the third day of this right now. And so just simply ask that if you happen to be in the Delta area region, south of Sacramento here, you're in the Clarksburg area, you're a boater, you're a fisherman, turn your sonar on. We found those 19 vehicles in the Steamboat Slough. We found the Honda here. We found the two pickup trucks that are on the west side of this uh, road right here, heading down towards the Painters, Painters Bill Bridge. But if you find any others, mark them, email us, or get a hold of your local sheriff's office and let them know that Duke Herringer is still missing. We want to thank the Herringer family for taking us in. They've been feeding us, they've been housing us, and this is one case that we are definitely going to be coming back to. And with that, we want to ask you to also do something that's completely free and it helps us. Subscribe over here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification. That way you get a notice anytime we upload a new video. Or if you happen to be on Facebook, hit that follow button. Every view counts and helps us out to get out here free of charge to help these families and law enforcement.